They train us to know your job, know what's needed. Don't be robots. No two calls are the same and no two responses are the same. I was assigned to the engine that day. Three cars involved, one that was in a, being a box truck. At that time it was one confirmed DOA, which is uh, dead on arrival. I can see the body laying on top over the patient that we're trying to uh, extricate. We had another firefighter, which come to find out it was firefighter Chad that was on top, working down, looking in, trying to um, see where this patient stuck at. As I look down, I see his eyes flickering. So at that point, there was like a whole new adrenaline shock. It's like, hey, he's still alive. We gotta get in there. And there's no second guessing. I just, I knew what I had to do. The cargo box is on the K-Rail. That's the only thing balancing it. And that's what made this call a little bit more uh, difficult, I guess we could say, is uh, was the fact that the, the cab of the truck was not supported. And I think the only sense of reality that kicked in was when it started coming in on me. And that's when I started thinking about my family and you know, realizing that I'm in a very bad spot. So I go in there, I stick my hand underneath, and I'm like, and that's at the point where I realized, this is a kid. I just communicated with Chad and go, hey man, the best way is gonna, we gotta let him down underneath. With saying that, that means someone has to be underneath there. He was supposed to be on working on a couple other cars, and he just found his hole um, working with us, and he, he got himself into a spot where he was in the middle of it all. And he was the first one that jumped in there and was like, I'm here. And, and it made my job so much better because I knew what he needed. There was a good, great communication we could pass back. Um, the thing that made his spot so difficult was the fact that he's directly underneath the engine compartment. Uh, his foot that was stuck in the dash was only held together by a piece of skin. Like there was, there was nothing that was, that was actually connected to the rest of his femur. There was a point where I, I looked at Dave, um, said, hey Dave, I was like, you gotta, find the, you gotta find the artery. You see where it's bleeding from? And he was able to confirm it. I was like, you just gotta pinch it. So using his own fingers, he's pinching off the artery to verify that this guy's gonna stop bleeding. I just yelled at the point, hey, he's out, he's out. And everyone came like we're normally trained to do, packaged him up and got him to the hospital. During that whole time, uh, I didn't know um, after talking to my captain, Captain Garcia, his father was on scene the whole time. I think that just brings the you know, sadness to the reality is that you know, the patient ended up passing as soon as he got to the hospital. I think a lot of things we did were great. Um, of course, there are always things that we can improve on. Um, but I think everybody stepped in where it needed to be stepped in at. So it's kind of hard for me to, to sit here and, and, and not so much accept the war because how my captains broke it down to me. It's not the incident of why you're receiving the war, it's how you responded to the incident. I can read his face and again, that trust, Go do what you need to do. I'm watching. No hesitancy whatsoever in him whatsoever. He's, um, he's got a great reputation here in this department, and I think he's a, a stout firefighter. And like I said, that, that just more embellished it. You know, I have high respects for him and what he did.